So we've all heard that eating proteins make you fuller than other macronutrients, such as fat and carbs, thereby helping you control your appetite and helping you lose weight. But did you know that not all proteins are equal when it comes to their ability to suppress appetite? Yes, that's right. You may be better off with a steak rather than four eggs. Hi, I'm Dr. Savali Powell, a professor in bariatric medicine. I'm going to discuss some of the clinical studies I did years ago to explain why not all proteins are the same in their ability to help with appetite control. Let's get into it and frame this by saying, we know that higher protein diets are associated with weight loss. And this is because dietary proteins are more effective at prolonging fullness or what we call satiety and suppressing subsequent food intake compared to other macronutrients like carbohydrates and fats. The increased satiety or fullness from protein has been observed from just having a single meal and even over 24 hours after a meal. The effect of protein on appetite seems to be through hunger hormones such as insulin, ghrelin, leptin, and GLP-1, the same molecule Ozempic seems to act through. For example, when you eat protein, insulin is released from the pancreas into the bloodstream. The release of insulin influences our brain, which then affects our feeding behavior, or in other words, our food intake. Most people think that all proteins are the same in inducing a feeling of fullness after we eat them. However, this is not true. Most proteins are different in how they affect our appetite. Identifying which specific type of dietary protein has the greatest effect on insulin release has a potential application for appetite control and food regulation, which would better help with weight loss. This is why I did a study years ago testing the effect of different proteins on our ability to control how much we eat. This crossover randomized control clinical trial of 30 men was published in the British Journal of Nutrition. I wanted to determine the acute effects of four different protein sources on glycemia, insulinemia, as well as appetite and subsequent food intake at a buffet meal. The participants were either fed a pre-meal containing either egg, turkey, tuna, or whey at four different times, one week apart. These pre-meals were designed so they were matched exactly for carbohydrates, protein, and energy, as you can see from this table. You can see by this graph that the blood sugar or glucose levels fell the most when participants had the whey protein and not so much with egg and turkey as a pre-meal. You might wonder why blood sugar levels fall with whey protein when proteins don't contain any sugar. Well, we all have a steady state of blood sugar level in the background, so our brains and organs can function optimally. So this is what we are measuring. As you can see from this graph, that the insulin response was different with all the proteins, with whey protein increasing blood insulin the highest and egg the lowest with turkey and fish in between. Now, according to our theory, the satiety or appetite of the participant should match the blood insulin spike induced by the protein they just ate, meaning the higher the insulin spike by the specific protein in the pre-meal, the fuller they would be. So to test how full the participants were by each of these protein pre-meal, we gave the participants an ad libitum buffet to eat and said to them, go for it, eat as much as you want until you're full. So when we measured how much they ate at the buffet meal, we found that the participants that had the whey protein beforehand at their pre-meal, they ate less in the buffet meal than those who had fish, turkey, and egg as their pre-meal. You can see that the fish was better than turkey and egg for suppressing appetite, and the turkey was better than egg. So the amount these men ate in the buffet meal corresponded beautifully to the insulin spike these proteins elicited during the pre-meal. Basically, the higher the insulin spike in the blood induced by the protein, the better it was for suppressing appetite. So those who had the whey pre-meal had 600 kilojoules or 150 calories less at the buffet than those who had the egg or turkey pre-meal. Those who had whey pre-meal also had about 350 kilojoules or 90 calories less at the buffet than those who had fish as a pre-meal beforehand. So you can see all the proteins are spiking insulin at different levels and thereby subsequently suppressing appetite accordingly. So whey basically in my study is better than fish, fish is better than turkey, turkey is better than egg. So egg came out having the worst appetite suppressing effect compared to the other proteins. When you're trying to lose weight and cut your calories, foods that make you fuller are really going to help you eat less without feeling constantly hungry. So choosing the right protein to eat while on a calorie controlled diet would be imperative. Interestingly, another study by you et al found that satiety was greater after consuming a tuna meal rather than chicken or beef meals. And yet another study found that casein milk and pea protein powders had a stronger effect on subsequent food intake 
compared to whey, when consumed as a starter meal. So it looks like casein and pea powders are top choices. Then whey protein, then fish, chicken, beef, turkey, and then last comes egg. Plant-based protein sources, including legumes, nuts, and seeds, can also be effective in inducing satiety, but you may need to consume larger quantities of them. See my previous video on this topic. Collectively, any type of protein you choose to include in your diet is going to be great for helping you control your appetite, support weight loss, and good health. So the question is, why are proteins so much better than fat and carbs for helping you lose weight and belly fat? Well, proteins work by several different mechanisms. First, the protein leverage hypothesis states that human beings will prioritize the consumption of protein over other dietary components and will eat until protein needs have been met, regardless of the energy content, leading to an overconsumption of foodstuffs when their protein content is low. What all of this means in simple terms is that humans have a strong preference for protein in their diet, and when they don't get enough protein, our bodies keep signaling to our brain that we're hungry even after we've stuffed ourselves with lots of food. So the idea is we will keep eating whatever, like fats and carbohydrates, until we get enough protein, and then we will stop. So this leads to overeating, especially when foods are low in protein. In other words, our bodies crave protein, and if we don't get what we need, we keep searching for more food. So if we eat salads, pasta, and rice dishes, for example, you will keep eating a lot of food to meet your protein needs because these foods lack sufficient amount of protein. This is why we can overeat on chips and cookies, not steak and chicken. Therefore, research studies have consistently shown that individuals who prioritize dietary protein tend to consume fewer calories and have better weight loss outcomes. And even if you overconsume protein, it's really hard for your body to convert it to fat. Second, proteins are brilliant for weight loss because an estimated 20 to 30% of calories from protein that you eat are burned off due to energy required for digestion and metabolism of the protein. This is called thermic effect of food and allows you to eat more. A higher protein intake also increases the levels of satiety hormones, type PYY, GLP-1, leptin, and cholecystokinin. At the same time, reducing your levels of hunger hormone which is called ghrelin. By reducing hunger and increasing satiety through these hormones, eating more protein will support you to consume fewer calories overall, thus helping you to lose weight. When you lose weight, you want to lose only fat, not muscle, to prevent your metabolic rate from dropping. Therefore, eating a diet high in protein pre helps prevent muscle loss and metabolic slowdown with your new lower weight. This is often referred to as metabolic compensation, and it can amount to several hundred calories a day. You may not be burning off if you you lose muscle mass. For this reason, a high protein intake and heavy strength training are two very important components of effective fat loss without muscle mass loss. Number five, because higher protein diets are highly satiating and lead to reduced hunger compared to low protein diets, it is easier to restrict calories on the high protein diet. Since you are fuller, you have a much easier time eating less without feeling deprived. In a 2005 study, consuming 30% of calories from protein caused people to automatically drop their caloric intake by 441 calories per day, which is a significant amount. Another study on overweight people with an increased protein intake of 30% of calories caused a massive drop in calorie intake even though they were not asked to eat less. The participants automatically lost an average of 11 pounds in 12 weeks without having to calorie control. Number six, losing weight is not the most important factor. Keeping it off in the long term is what really matters. A higher protein diet has been shown not to only help you lose weight but also help keep it off and prevent weight regain in the long term. Number seven, a high protein intake can help you burn more calories all day, even when you sleep. A 2015 study found that those participants who were overfed a high protein diet burned an extra 260 calories a day. Therefore, eating a higher protein diet can help burn more calories and have a metabolic advantage over diets that are lower in protein. So putting the last couple of points together, Protein supports weight loss on both sides of the calories in versus calorie out equation. Eating more protein may make you less hungry so you consume fewer calories while also helping you burn calories as well. Therefore, higher protein diets is going to be one of the best ways to support your weight loss journey as you don't have to struggle to restrict calories. As I mentioned in my previous video, one should eat about one gram of protein per kilogram body weight per day or in other words 0.72 grams of protein per pound body weight. This is the ideal amount for an average weight woman or man. This amount will also be effective for weight loss and help you gain muscle. 
when you strength train. Most studies on protein and weight loss express protein intake as a percentage of calories. According to these studies, consuming about 30% of calories from protein seems to be effective for weight loss. So in simple terms, if you're on a 2,000 calorie per day diet and you want 30% of those calories to come from protein, you one would aim for about 150 grams of protein per day. Using a calorie or nutrition tracker in the beginning may be helpful for determining the right amount of protein intake for your body weight. One strategy you might consider is weighing and measuring your food to ensure you're hitting your protein target. You do not need to do this forever, but it's important in the beginning until you get a good idea of what a high protein diet looks like. The other thing you need to know is that you do not have to spread your protein intake throughout the day by eating protein at every meal time if you don't want to. You can have all your requirements in one meal. See my previous video where I delve into this subject. Increasing protein intake is simple. Just eat more protein-rich foods. These include fish like salmon and sardines, haddock and trout. You can eat meats such as chicken, turkey, lean beef, pork, eggs, all types, dairy by milk and cheese, and yogurt, legumes such as kidney beans, chickpeas, lentils, etc. You can consider choosing a combination of lean animal protein and plant-based proteins as well. In that way, you can manage calories and promote heart health by reducing saturated fat intake. Taking a supplement like whey, casein, or pea can also be a good idea if you have difficulty in reaching your protein goals. There are many foods you can eat to boost your protein intake. However, all proteins differ in boosting metabolism, reducing appetite, and affecting several weight-regulating hormones. My study showed that whey was better than other proteins. Fish also came up on top, with egg being the least satisfying for hunger control. However, regardless of the type of protein, Eating a high-protein diet, which means about 30% of calories coming from protein, can cause weight loss without calorie counting, portion control, or carb restriction. An increase in protein intake can also help prevent weight regain. I hope this video has been helpful. Have a look at last week's video in which I helped you become a fat burner without doing any exercise. It's amazing how you can activate your body to burn fat without hardly any effort. But to really get the results you want, Make sure you come back to watch next week's video in which I will discuss the best time of the day to exercise for fat loss and health benefit. I think you'll be surprised when you hear some of the research studies on this. If you've enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe and share it with anyone who might benefit from it. This is Dr. Savali Pal. See you next week.